Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. Hey guys, how's it going? So for this week's weekly upload, I wanted to, I guess, add on to a previous video that we had made. So last year, part of season three, um, we had a video where we broke down and compared our Kubota M5 111 to our Kubota M6 101. In that video, I guess you can kind of come to the conclusion that it depends on your operator's ability. You can't really definitively pick between the M5 and the M6 chassis uh, or series of tractor um, without knowing who's going to be operating it. So obviously your, your M5 tractor is going to come in at that more small, compacted size with the added bonus of still maintaining a very high horsepower output at the PTO, at the power takeoff. Um, the M6 in comparison... You get a lot larger tractor, a lot more weight, a lot more stature uh, on the road, but you're going to lose your clearance. You know, you can't get in really tight areas with uh, wooded driveways um, with a lot of overhanging branches, but you're also going to gain, I guess, an easier transmission to use. I do seem to find that guys are quicker in the M6 than they are in the M5, but again, it depends on your operator. We've been blessed with having some amazing uh, crew and staff. Um, and Carter, who runs our M5, is top tier, and he's just good all around. He, he's ran our 6110Rs, now he's running our M5s, and it's really, it's, it's fucking wicked when you have guys like that. Um, I can run it all, he can run it all, um, and Willard, he can, he can pretty well do her all too. Um, but I wanted to make this video to include into that conversation now. Just out of the Kubota lineup, we're not bringing in IVTs and infinitely versatile transmissions into this, because I, I too believe I share the common opinion in the snow industry. It might not be worth the money, but I do think the IVT transmission is the easiest and most productive way to conduct snow management in a residential context. But the L60, something that most tractor brands across the board have in subcompact compact tractors, is a hydrostatic transmission. So for those of you that might not know what a hydrostatic transmission is, it's basically just a, a pedal that takes you forward and a pedal that takes you backwards. You rev her up and you, you go. Um, now with the L60s, you're going to get some cool features that other tractors might not have, like auto throttle advance. But personally, I don't really enjoy uh, stuff like auto throttle advance. Sure, it might help you on fuel consumption uh, or fuel economy. But when you're in a driveway, you want to be going slower with your RPMs, you know, up there to be getting that wet snow. At least for us, it's generally very wet. Uh, get that wet snow out of the blower as quick as possible so it don't clog or freeze up. But what would I, in my unvaluable opinion, but my opinion with years under the belt now of so snow management in the residential context... What would I consider to be the superior residential snow tractor? I think what I would recommend, and I think other guys my age that are big in this area as well would probably agree with me for the most part, is I would recommend starting with a high growth stat, especially if you didn't grow up on a farm or grow up in big rig equipment. Starting with a hydrostat you get multiple benefits. So the first being that anyone can use it. You're going to get in it. You're not going to feel overwhelmed. The transmission's stupid easy. Um, and second of all, hydrostatics are only in a certain chassis size of tractors, right? So you're not going to be walking out the gate into a, I always classify them by steps, into a three-step tractor, um, a little ladder to get in there. Um, you're going to get to really grasp the context of this business model but at a minuscule scale. So you're going to get to see your corners, feel your tractor. You know, you're not speeding around. If you were to bump into something because you're new to it, you're not going to cause an excess amount of damage as you would in something like an M6 where you're working with like, I don't know, I think ours is like 12 or 13,000 pounds with the blower and the weighted tires and everything. Um, you're working with like a, a smart car basically of a tractor 
I know other guys in my lane who I look up to and respect and have the privilege of knowing, such as Nick from Nick Snow and Stefano Narducci. They've started in, you know, that three, four R John Deere size and also the the L60 and MX size. Um, and I do, I, I did as well. So I, I believe that it's a great starting place for any new guy to kind of get into the market, get into the door of a tractor dealership and, and finalize the purchase of your first tractor and master your craft. Now, I will add, once you start taking your residential snow division to scale, okay, depending on where you live, everyone's different. What works for one person might not work for others. Me personally, in the area that I live, we do not have great customer density. It's almost impossible to have. A lot of people do their own driveways. There's a lot of saturated uh, competition. A lot of sat it's a saturated market. Um, I believe you want that L60 to get into the gate, but I don't know if you want it in between. So you have your beginner level, then you skip to your scale. So you're growing, 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 growing. That's the grind. That's where I'm at. Um, and in that grind, you're going to have setbacks and keep growing, setbacks, keep growing. Um, and then when you're to scale, I see also the benefit of an L60. Now, in that in-between window, you're not going to have the best density in the entire world because you're pretty well taking the work you can get. You're negotiating with customers. You're going to have some people that aren't happy because you're learning and you got new guys and they're not you and they're not able to do the job that you would do. I would recommend that the next you know, four or five years, you invest in bigger tractors. So the, depending on what type of transmissions you want, uh, but for Kubota strictly, I would personally, I, I would go with the M5. Um, as long as you know how to drive manual, you got that down. Uh, you, you're not going to get overwhelmed by the size of the tractor. Your customer isn't going to be overwhelmed by the size of the tractor. Um, and you can still run that 92 inch inverted blower. So you're still packing the same punch. You're still completing driveways just as quick. And you don't need to waste all your money on going all the way up to, I think it's a M6, like 135 or 141 or something like that before your transmission speed can match the M5 111. So we have an M6 101 and it's a bigger, higher series tractor, but it's actually slower than our M5. So it's bigger and slower. And the M5 is smaller, faster, and can run the exact same size blower and do the same job. So as long as you master that transmission, I would be scaling with M5s. Personally, that's what I'm going to be doing, um, is running with the, the M5 size tractor matched with L60. So I'm going to try to get four big tractors. Um, one of them, like we, I'm stuck into certain leases, right? So I'm going to have to keep the M6 and whatnot. And if there's good deals, obviously you can move in on those. I'm not telling anybody strictly blindly say yes to just M6 tractors or M5 tractors, whatever's the best deal. Um, but I, I am saying, um, that the M5 is your best bet if you were walking in cold turkey with a brand new tractor. So long story short, if you wanted my unwanted opinion, I would recommend if you're a new guy in the game that you get up to that three or four size tractor range um, with, you know, start it with your L60, move into that M5 range because you get the ability to, to service more people. That's what it's all about. Um, and then once you start getting to that, you know, five, 600 customer range, you're going to notice that you're naturally, because of your reputation and, co and compliments with the fact that you've already touched the four corners of your town, you're going to start to fill out, is what I call it. And once you start filling out, that's when the L60 can come back in. And that's when you can start buying, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight L60s. Um, because it's in that window that your road speed isn't such a big deal. Um, the L60 is a lot slower than uh, John Deere 4052R, 4066. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion. So 
If we were to classify them, I think every tractor has their place. I think every tractor, again, depends on the operator. Um, but I think the L60 is a perfect place for new guys to start. I think the M5 is a wonderful tractor to scale with, at least in a region like mine. Um, and again, try to steer clear from scaling your whole way up the mountain with just a hydrostatic tractor. You can, you can do anything. Um, it's a free country, it's a free world, but the only reason I say that is you're gonna put a lot more pressure on your targeted sales, and you're really gonna have to push for density at the gate, which you can do, and a lot of people do it. It just depends on how you approach it. Me, I went the other way. I, I went for, you know, have a few on this street, a few on this street, a few over here. And that's just the way our city plow trucks function. And that's just the way that we've had to structure our business. And that's where it's different per person. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you guys own a snow removal company, did you guys start with hydrostatics? Do you still run hydrostatics? Do you strictly run hydrostatics? Or have you never felt the need to buy one? So let me know down below. I really do appreciate it, guys. Um, and yeah. Thank you guys for sticking around. We'll have another video up next week. Let me know if you guys have anything down below that you guys would like to see, and I'll be happy to make it. Have a good one. Hey, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Hate applying my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a superstar, so I gotta shine. Top dollar be the bottom line. Bottom feeding niggas.